Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we gather today and celebrate the feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, or in Latin, we call it Corpus Christi. This feast was established to honor Jesus' real presence among us under forms of bread and wine in that sacrament which we call the most blessed sacrament. We remember that Jesus left us the legacy of his presence here among us in these special signs of bread and wine, and we celebrate that now as we come together for this Mass, which we also call the Eucharist, to come into communion with Jesus in this great and wonderful sacrament. I welcome all of you who are here with us today, who who are joining us through the internet in the various ways through social media that you have found us, that you are with us. Thank you for being with us and praying with us. And so I invite you now to open your hearts to the Lord by first of all humbling yourself, acknowledging our sins, and asking God now to grant us mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
let us pray. O God, who in this wondrous sacrament left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all of these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary 
not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. with you and, and with, with your, spirit. your spirit wait a minute hello one two okay didn't sound like it was on the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark glory to you o lord on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread When they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are many things that we can say about the Eucharist. It's one of those topics that is very deep, very profound. When I was in the seminary studying theology, it took an, we took an entire year just focusing on the Eucharist itself as a theological topic, just because there is so much to it and so many aspects of it and so many ways to look at it. Today, the church celebrates the Feast of Corpus Christi, which, of course, is Latin for the body of Christ. And it was established back in 1264 by Pope Urban IV, who recognized that there needed to be a feast to focus primarily on the Eucharist. And it was decided that it would be the Thursday after Trinity Sunday that the feast would be celebrated. But because the bishops felt that it would be better on Sunday to celebrate the feast, they they moved it to, to be observed on Sunday so more of the faithful would have the opportunity of celebrating this feast. Yet nonetheless, the traditional date is Thursday, Thursday after Trinity Sunday, which of course Trinity Sunday was last Sunday. And that's to coincide with the day that Jesus established the Eucharist on Holy Thursday, the night before he died, when he ate the Last Supper with his disciples. And we heard that in the Gospel, how Jesus took bread and the cup of wine and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is the cup of my blood. And from that moment on, Jesus established the sacrament of the Eucharist that would be a legacy of his presence and a reminder of the, a living reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus offered of his life on the cross. We hear in the gospel that Jesus' last supper was the Passover. The Passover was a celebration that prepared the people of Israel to be freed from slavery in Egypt. And the final plague of the ten plagues, you remember, that were cast upon Egypt was that the eldest of each family would die. But if they would participate in the Passover, that child would be spared. And so what they needed was to get a a lamb and take that lamb slaughter it, sacrifice it, take the blood of the lamb and place it on the doorposts of the home and eat the flesh of the lamb. That was the Passover meal. And anyone who participated in that Passover meal, their firstborn was spared because of the sacrifice of the lamb. Moving forward to the Last Supper, Jesus was also celebrating as the Jewish people did as a reminder of that that great liberation, the freedom offered to the the Israelites, he celebrated the Passover with them. But that night, Jesus transformed it. He transformed the Passover into something greater and something more profound, that no longer would the, the blood of a lamb be offered in sacrifice and eating the flesh of that lamb be the sacrifice, 
Jesus himself would be that lamb. Jesus himself would offer his own life, and his blood would be the one that offered freedom and liberation, not from slavery as the people of Israel, Israel were, were liberated from slavery, but more importantly, liberated from sin, liberated from those things that pull us down and distance us and tear us away from God. The blood of Christ would redeem us, wash us clean of our sins, and bring us back into union with Christ. And so Jesus, that night before he died, offered that legacy of his presence and the promise of his sacrifice, which was fulfilled on Good Friday, when he indeed offered his life on our behalf. And that's why every church, every Catholic church, the crucifix stands by the altar as a reminder that that Mass is not just a prayer service, but it is the reenactment of the crucifixion of Jesus and the ultimate sacrifice that he gave for us when he offered his life and gave us his body and blood as food, as was that Passover meal, so that you and I could be liberated from our sins, that you and I could be brought into the, the, the deliverance of, of, of new life, eternal life, which is our inheritance and our, our promise that God gives to us. Corpus Christi is celebrated in many cultures in different ways, and one of the ways in which we, we even did that here at our parish this past Thursday evening on the traditional day of Corpus Christi by celebrating Mass and then taking the Blessed Sacrament and the Monstrance, which is that gold vessel, that uh, Monstrance, which is Latin for showing, that the Blessed Sacrament was taken outside of the church to four altars that were prepared. And at each of the altars, the Blessed Sacrament is placed upon that altar. And an excerpt from the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are read, uh, speaking about the Eucharist. And in this way, we are reminded of how Jesus gave us this great gift of his body and blood in the Eucharist and reminded that the Eucharist truly is the real and true presence of Christ, his body and blood, soul and divinity, present under forms of bread and wine, a very deep mystery for us, yet a mystery of God that, that is given to us and is so important for us. When Jesus promised the Eucharist, and you could read this in the Gospel of St. John in chapter 6, he promised the people that they would receive food from heaven, bread from heaven, and that they would never hunger again, they would never thirst again. And the people were all excited about this. And they couldn't wait for Jesus to give them this food because they were just coming off that uh, miracle of, his, of Jesus multiplying the loaves of bread and the fish. And they said, wow, free food, right? Who doesn't want to be fed? And without paying, so much the better. And so Jesus, again, was offering them food that would would satisfy them completely. And he said that this would be food, bread from heaven. Wow, how great that would be. But then the clincher came. The reality of what Jesus was talking about came to them. And he said, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And the drink that I will give is my blood. Well, if you, as you read in chapter 6, that didn't sit very well with a lot of the people. And they began to leave. They just couldn't understand. They couldn't take that. But Jesus didn't call them back and say, wait a minute, you didn't understand what I'm saying. He did not because he meant what he said. He meant that he would feed us with his body and blood under the forms of bread and wine, which would be for us our, our food of heaven. And that's why the church continues to maintain and uphold that, that the Eucharist, the bread and wine, are truly the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And not for a moment has the church ever backed from that truth or for pro proclaiming it. And we celebrate that. We celebrate it every time we come to Mass Every time the, the, the bread and wine is transformed, transubstantiated, rather, I should say, into the body and blood of Christ, we remember the great gift that Jesus gave to us and to the entire church.
And so this Corpus Christi Sun Sunday is a day for us to celebrate this truth, and this great gift that Jesus left us. May we always truly believe it, approach it regularly, and approach it with great humility and great respect, knowing that Jesus offers himself for us, and he comes to us in this special communion with him so that we can be one with him and we and he with us. Please join with me now as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We hunger for the life of God among us, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us call upon the Almighty Father, whose providence over us satisfies all our human needs. For the universal church, many members but one body, that God will gather us together as one family, safeguard our unity, and perfect us in his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who control the wealth and resources of nations, that our provident God will give them loving and generous hearts so there will be bread enough for all people of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we will always appreciate the gift that the Eucharist is, that we will firmly believe that it is the real presence of Jesus and always receive this great sacrament with reverence and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the students of Our Lady of Las Vegas who completed their school year, that God will bless them as they enter into a new phase of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in our troubled world and for an end to all hatred, violence, war, and terrorism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Thomas Yatra Sr., for whom this Mass is offered, that God in his mercy will raise them in eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of our own private intentions, that they will be satisfied by the providence of God and that we will see his will in the answer he gives us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O good and gracious God, whose compassion embraces all generations and whose love provides for all our needs, accept the prayers of your church and satisfy, as your wisdom knows best, the needs of every human heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and the good of all his holy church. church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the sufferings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, Jesus offered himself to you, Father, as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels and saints, cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Thomas and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. our Savior's command informed by his divine teaching. Together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other safely now a sign of peace. sins of those 
This is Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, as always, for being with us today and celebrating this beautiful feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus. We praise God for giving us so precious a gift as his son, and we thank Jesus for desiring and wanting to, to stay with us in this very special way in the Eucharist. We know that the Lord is with us always in so many ways, but in the most excellent way, Jesus is truly with us, body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist. And today we remember that very solemnly. We always remember it, we believe it, hopefully, and we profess that faith always. But today we wanted to, to bring that, that faith and that belief to the surface to really, again, proclaim it and profess it. 
I thank all of our ministers who assisted at Mass today. To Cheryl, thank you for being our, our uh, lector, for, for Mikhail, for, for being our, manning our cameras, and also to Annie and David for, for lifting us up in spirit with the music. Corpus Christi truly is a, a, a wonderful celebration, and, and it is a gift that we can celebrate always, every, every Sunday. And I know that uh, those of you who are with us online, you, that you can't participate fully in the, the Holy Communion with the Lord uh, by coming with him, but, but always is the spiritual communion. Those words are on the screen that, that can help at least participate in that way, uh, spiritually participating in that Holy Communion with the Lord. Thank you also for always all that who are with us and for your support for your donations and all the many ways that you, you uh, help us here at Our Lady. Our uh, thanks and our gratitude is very great, and we thank you for your generosity and your, your goodness. And so we ask the Lord now to bless us as we go forth. And so until we see each other again, let us now accept God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I will.